Hey everyone, Harry here to talk about the petition for cert in the Colorado 14th Amendment Section 3 case where the Colorado Supreme Court's 4 to 3 vote held that Trump couldn't appear on the primary ballot because he'd engaged in insurrection. All right, it's a real petition, but it's not the real petition we continue to wait for. But it is by the Republican Party of Colorado, and they were interveners in the um, the proceedings below. And interveners are parties. the uh, The standards for intervening are you basically have to show you've got you meet the same kinds of rules as as a regular party would meet, and you there's um, all the kinds of uh, standing requirements and the like. So this is a real petition on the one hand. On the other hand, the Supreme Court is is really going to be primed to move if it does move. But the one that, that it'll really um, take up very quickly, set a quick schedule for, decide quickly, et cetera, will be the one that Trump files. And remember the... Um, holding of the Colorado Supreme Court is the um, Secretary of State, you may not put Trump on the ballot, but we suspend our ruling. We put a stay on it until January 4th, because January 5th is the final day that the Secretary of State ha has to put on the, the names for the primary ballots. Now, um, I think Trump can be expected to petition for cert a little before the fourth. It's just, it's dodgy to, you know, um, wait till the last minute that way, because as soon as it expires, then if there's no stay, the, the mandate's out there and the Secretary of State takes him off the ballot and it might be too late to unscramble those eggs. So I think we'll be seeing Trump at least a few days before the 4th. But in the meantime, we have a bona fide um, petition by the Republican Party, and it makes three claims. The first one that it makes is this officer claim. Uh, and remember that one is, um, that's the one that the trial court below ruling against him, against him, against him, against him, found for him at the end, which is the language of uh, Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, which doesn't specify, it goes through different offices, senators, etc., doesn't list president. So um, that means uh, everybody, and you, you can't, if you've done these bad things, you can't run for any office, federal office, except for the most powerful federal office, the president. Now, just to state that argument is kind of to um, highlight its weakness, like it's a kind of, come on, really? Uh, so, you know, Jefferson Davis could have run for president and how much sense does that make, et cetera. But, you know, there, there's that sort of notion of, oh, come on, butts up against the plain meaning, you know, the its absence in the text. And that's a kind of classic issue for so-called textualists, which the Supreme Court, uh, you know, the most of the justices are, and they could just say, you know, this is how it was written. I'm sorry. And and there actually has been um, a rationale that Trump's uh, lawyer tried to offer below. Um, he said, uh, you know, for if, if the president is going to uh, run and the people elect him, that's a kind of a kosherizing or, you know, removal of the stain if the whole country says, OK, you can lead us. So, you know, that's a that's a, a read they can try to um, uh, balance on. But anyway, that that um, issue is going to be there. And one other point about it. It's a really interesting case where the Supreme Court is going to be, you know, they totally tied in knots trying to figure out how they can decide it with uh, having the minimal sort of damage as they had in, say, Bush v. Gore uh, by having a polarized court or, you know, having it on the basis of a controversial ruling. In other words, this officer um, argument you know, it's not the greatest argument. I can see in a, you know, a justice being pulled one at a time saying, um, you know, that you're not being able to get to five on it. But it might be if the whole court together is just looking for a way to um, 
hold, you know, hold, uh, get Trump back on the ballot and do minimal damage to the law overall. This it would be the a, a really convenient way to do it. It would be sort of a one-off. They're just making a kind of an odd holding about one provision, and it wouldn't generate others. And I just want to um, distinguish between that kind of politics, you could call it, or result orientation, and you know the most the more crass sort of Bush v. Gore style of uh, we want the Republican to win. I mean the the um, Supreme Court will be really painfully aware of its own role here and hugely reluctant to be seen as the you know moving force that scuttled everything or to be seen as itself deeply polarized uh, and you know f- there's a fiery descent from a uh, three or four um, so that's that means that the officer um, rationale is kind of worth keeping in mind, even if it feels kind of weak, because, you know, it might be the, the, the cleanest way out for the court. All right. The second um, claim here, and it's going to be really big, I, it might be the biggest thing in, in the court is, you know, all this talk about uh, from Tribe and Judge Ludig and the conservative scholars from Chicago that the amendment is self-executing. What that means is we don't need anything else to make the, the force of the amendment um, uh, take effect. We don't need in particular to have Congress pass a law that effectuates it by, you know, saying um, Trump, for in, in this case, uh, shouldn't be on the ballot because in our judgment, he engaged in insurrection, etc. Rather, a court or it's just out there for a court to enforce. The second issue is this is not a self-executing amendment. So it goes to the heart of the issue that, you know, tribe and looting and everyone have been, you know, out there trying to sell. Uh, and in, in, uh, particular, and you could really see the court going this way, but, um, again, would, would all or almost all of them do it? Would it prompt a fiery dissent and make the court itself, you know, look political and, and have to dispense its own capital? But you could see them saying for this, uh, you know, early on, it was always Congress that voted people off. And even in the 19, there was one instance after the Civil War, it was Congress that did it. So our reading is that it, it's not self-executing, you need a congressional vote. That's the second argument that the Colorado Republican Party is making, and it's going to be also, I think, really important in the court. And then they're making an interesting third argument that won't apply generally, saying they have a right of association. They can basically have a First Amendment right to choose whatever candidate they want, and this violates it. And um, that's, you know, the that's their claim that they can make, but I don't think the court will take up that claim. They, the court can always decide, you know, if you had three questions presented, we'll take one and we'll rewrite two and we'll forget three. So that's in there now, but it won't stick around. So um, the Republican Party, uh, uh, you know, someone's actually petitioned for cert, but it's not the big one. I think the court will just handle it in the normal course. If they take up the Trump one, they'll sort of fold this in but um, otherwise, it won't be the one that sort of prompts the action. Uh, but when action is prompted, it's got two of the leading uh, arguments or issues that the Supreme Court will consider. This officer argument to say the, the, it just doesn't apply to the president, everyone but the president, and the self-executing argument to say we need a vote from Congress. So it's a pretty good preview of what might be coming and fairly uh, soon. Uh, but the main event will be the petition from one Donald Trump. Talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video and other Talking Feds content, please take a second to like and subscribe. Talk to you later.